Welcome to Mindset Transformations with Coach Myrna, a show that showcases content and how to change your brain to change your life. A show empowering women who have been abused, betrayed, abandoned, or rejected to change how they feel about themselves and become co-creative sources attracting abundant love and happiness into their lives. I'm Coach Myrna. I am a certified professional coach, author of three books, a motivational speaker, and your host. I know from personal experience that change is hard. In my book, Out of the Snares, A Story of Hope and Encouragement, I share my journey of poverty and child abuse, betrayal, and disappointment, and how I turned it all around to live an abundant life. This show is going to give you the tools to do the same in your life. And today we have a special guest all the way from Scotland, a Marine Sharphouse. Marine is a highly experienced and hugely effective transformational life coach, success, and mindset coach. She is a licensed master practitioner of neuro-linguistic programming and a motivational speaker and mentor. Maureen is currently working on her first book, which will be out late 2017. She's a member of the International Coaching Federation, holds a current license to practice neuro-linguistic programming, at the master practitioner level. Maureen has run a vibrant coaching practice since 2010 in the United Kingdom. She doesn't believe, however, that it's solely due to her high level of training and experience that accounts for her high levels of effectiveness as a coach. She believes it's because she's an authentic and real coach who has experienced rock bottom and then completely transformed her life. I achieved something that I was told was impossible in my life, and I no longer believe in limitations. I can deliver it because I have lived it, she says. My coaching is dynamic, and it brings results. So listeners, sit back for a treat. Today we're going to be talking to Maureen Sharphouse, and our topic is living a life with no limits. Maureen, welcome to our show today. So how are you doing all the way from Scotland? What's the weather like over there today? So Maureen, yes, um, uh, what is, um, what's the weather like in um, Scotland today? Today it's actually raining, but do you know, Myrna, we've had amazing sunshine for about 10 days. So a little bit of rain is welcome. The gardens are needing it. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay, I guess we're getting into the summer months. And, um, yeah, I remember visiting um, London last, was it August, and um, I had sunshine for the entire time there, and everybody was saying that I was so lucky. That doesn't yeah. normally happen. So, yeah, well, awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to be in our show today. Audience, uh, Maureen is going to tell you how to tap into the amazing power of your mind and make your life of no limits for yourself so that you can live your life fully and achieve true happiness and success because we know you both want and deserve um, true happiness and success. So, Maureen, um, uh, you know, I'm so interested in talking to you and understanding um, your 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 system of neuro linguistic programming. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became a transformative life coach. Yeah. Well, first of all, just let me thank you, Marna, for inviting me here. It's, it's just wonderful to talk to you. And uh, yeah, so thank you for inviting me and inviting me to talk to your audience. That's great. And you kind of asked, how did I become a transformative life coach? I think, you know, the the very simple answer is I transformed my own life, achieving something that others said was impossible. And it really hit home to me the amazing power of the mind. 
and how, you know, we are the ones that set the limitations. And, you know, and to kind of make that sort of really clear for you, you know, if you'd met me sort of 15 years ago, you'd have been facing somebody who was disabled, um, using a wheelchair, having care of oh. bath and drink in the morning, living in excruciating pain, and wow. somebody who was down like six stone two pounds. And again, you know, with lots of difficult, you know, I wasn't even able to sort of get myself out of bed or to dress myself or bath myself. And I was relying on carers for the most simple of tasks. And I was told wow. to accept my um, and accept my disability and the limitations it posed. And I was also, you know, in a very stressful marriage at the time, I had huge financial pressure. I, I'd actually lost sight of even me. You know, I didn't know who I was anymore. You know, I'd been robbed of my health, robbed of my job, robbed of my house. Wow. Robbed of myself. That is and, so sad. Uh, yeah, but, you know, if you meet me now, I'm probably the happiest, healthiest person. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, that's why you're teaching people how to do the same thing. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah. So um, tell our audience um, what exactly um, what you were diagnosed with and um, what is it that you were battling? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was, um, it was thought I had multiple sclerosis. I was told to accept my life. You know, I'd gone downhill very rapidly and, um yeah, I was awarded disability benefits benefit for life um, at the highest rates available for care and mobility because I wasn't expected to get better. You know, I was wow. told to accept that the rest of my life was going to be one of disability and pain and relying on carers. And, wow. you know, I really, you know, turned that around and I achieved some things which I was told wasn't possible in my life. And it really made me sort of really recognize the power of the mind. And I went on, I got really sort of into the power of the mind and personal development and realized the enormity of what I'd achieved and decided to train then as a coach and also, you know, as a life coach, a successive mindset coach, and also train in NLP. And I, I chose to sort of learn from some of the world leaders and set up my own coaching practice in 2010. And yeah, you know, it's very much um, living a life in the limits and helping my clients really throw off the perceived limitations of what we think we can or can't achieve. And, you know, because the impossible is only impossible until it's done. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, that is, you know, I have heard of this, um, you know, one of the, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you've probably read his book or heard about him, but when um, Christopher Reeve, we all know, was paralyzed, and um, yeah. he went through um, an amazing turnaround and almost got himself before he died, um, I think, walking and breathing and all that stuff, but he was yeah. totally paralyzed. And I know that, yeah. um, you know, when I read his biography, he started this change by sitting outside every day and working on his mind and telling and yeah. yeah and and um yeah and even the movie Kill Bill when you know she was in the you know it was a movie but I remember her sitting in the back of the car for two hours willing her feet to move willing her toes yeah. first willing her her legs first <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's how you do it and I, yeah so maybe tell us about that okay mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that is exactly what I did do. You know, I visualized wow. myself walking and running and happy and healthy and running up the hills. And the more wow. I did, the more I saw myself in my mind being able to walk and run and being fully happy and healthy and going on wow. the with grandchildren and charging around with my dogs and running into a lover's arms at an airport. You know, oh, you're kidding. You even went there, huh? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was all part of the plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we're laughing about it now, but that must have been, um, I, I can just imagine what it will be like to um, yeah. to wait on you someone know, to bathe, bathe you and, and to be totally dependent on someone. It's everybody's worst yeah. nightmare. So, um, yeah. you know, audience, anybody that's listening, yeah, there, there's a way around it. Go ahead, sorry. Mm. Yeah. You know, and the thing was, Marna, you know, I'd been told to accept, so no one was looking for anything different for me. 
you know, everybody's expectations were of me to keep going downhill and keep being disabled. So yeah. nobody was looking for any, anything different. Nobody was looking for any improvement in my health. You know, and it yeah. took me about a decade to do it. But, you know, I've yeah. done it. And life I visualized for myself back in 2002, and that life that, you know, I visualized myself running and happy and healthy and running <laughs> into that lover's arm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. Like well, you know, the doctors, um, you know, uh, you've got to go to the east in order to um, uh, to be to have holistic, you know, treatments and in in yeah. and holistic um, healing. But the Western doctors, um, the only thing they know are drugs, and um, if they can't cure yeah. it with drugs, they they don't believe that it's that it's um that you can be healed. Yeah. So. You yeah, you so you have right. gone into the mind yeah. to do the healing instead of holistic you know the holistic approach, yeah. but I yeah. am so proud of you. I'm so uh, yeah. I'm you know I'm so inspired oh, you. by your story. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So you know, you, go ahead. You know I, I looked at myself as a whole person. You know you know I think you know doctors and medical people they tend to look at you as you know as symptoms or you tick a certain box or set a set, you know label. And as you mm-hmm. see, they go down the road with medication. You know, whereas what I did with myself was I took, looked outside that and I looked at myself as a whole person. And, you know, and looked at everything. You know, that complete 360 degree approach to my mind, body, spirit, and soul. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we sort of took that whole holistic approach to myself. And, you know, mm-hmm. took whatever steps I needed to take to actually turn it around. So, yeah, thank you for being proud. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's awesome. Now you mentioned um, NLP, which means neuro linguistic programming, a couple of times. Um, tell our audience how did that? You know, how can clients use NLP coaching to help them to live a life of no limits? Can that, that yeah. can that be transferred? Absolutely, and you know, neuro linguistic programming is often referred to as the science of excellence. And it's a bit, you know, if you think of your brain as a big computer, and if you know the correct program to run, which yeah. is, you know, the pain, the self-talk you give yourself, the way you communicate with yourself, if you know the correct program to run, you can achieve just about anything you want. You know, if you run a successful strategy, you will get a successful result. You know, so neurolinguistic programming is very much about how, you know, our brain thinks how our brain processes information, how we communicate with ourselves, how, you know, other things communicate to us, you know, and about how our brain processes that information. And, you know, the truth is we all look through the world through our own lenses. And, you know, NLP really is about encouraging clients to, you know, live their lives with all five senses firing. You know, their eyes wide open, their ears wide open, tasting, touching, feeling. And running strategies, you know, maybe the you know, models on people who have got the successful results that you want, you know, maybe the people who are ultra confident or have the business success you want or the growing health you want, and looking into their brains and thinking, well, what strategies are they running? You know, what pictures are they making in their head? What are they telling themselves? How are they communicating that? You know, what strategy are they running? Because if you run a similar strategy, then you can possibly get those same results. So, so yeah, it, it's a really empowering um, thing in LP. And, you know, I use it hugely with my clients, hugely with my clients, and really look at what's going on in the mind, you know, what's the process. Well, you know what? To- yeah, you've just... Um, uh- um, you know, I you know I know the 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 standard definition of NLP neurolinguistic programming is programming your brain to get from where you want to where you want to be where you are today mm. to where you want to be tomorrow, which is basically the same tagline of, as coaching because that's what a coach helps um, someone do. But I've actually yeah. never heard it um, put like the way you just put it, and that is that is big. That is the truth. That is incredible that um, a computer doesn't do anything unless it has the correct program. And, and yeah. you know, in a computer, it's never user error. It, it's never, you know, it's always user error because whatever you put in a computer, is that's what you're going to get out because it just follows yeah. your instructions. Yeah. So that is, that exactly is pretty good. Um, I like that. 
you know, I will research yeah. that myself. You know, yeah. we're, we only have yeah, an hour show here, so we can't really get yeah. into that. But so what you're saying is when you coach as a neurolinguistic um, programming coach, you um, first um, understand how your client's brain processes information, and then you develop a strategy. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We look at what they're doing in their brains and their minds, the pictures mm-hmm. they're making, the self-talk they're giving themselves, the feelings they have, the, you know, the way and how that triggers their actions and the results they get. And if it's not bringing them the results they want in their life, then we look at that strategy and say, well, where do we need to change that? What do we need to do differently to get you the results you want? You know, and that might mean you have to change the pictures in your head. You know, it might mean you have to start, you know, giving yourself more positive self-talk. And, you know, it's usually a whole combination of things, but, you know, running and installing a successful strategy that will bring you the results you want, rather than running one that doesn't work so well on just on, you know, replay constantly, you know, as a learned behavior pattern that we've fallen into. Okay. That is, that is great. I like it. All right. You know, I will, um, I'm learning something myself here. So that's pretty good. Now, I know also that you're putting all this information into a book called Everyday Miracles. Um, uh, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, my book that I'm writing just now is, the working title is Everyday Miracles, How to Create Miracles in Your Everyday Life. And mm-hmm. the book is very much my, it's my story. It is my story, my own personal story of how I transform a life from disability and pain and ill health and unhappiness to the amazing, wonderful life I live now. But it's yeah. sharing the steps, the mental processes I went through, the steps, the strategies I ran, and that, you know, including the strategies in my mind. And it okay. includes steps to hear and questions for the reader so that they can create change in their life also. Um, so it's really, you know, it's a mixture of that inspirational story running through it, but also it's a how-to book. It's how to create miracles in your everyday life. Wow! How to you know the process? That should be that should be a bestseller because everybody is going to want to understand yeah. those programs and those strategies in order to get yeah. success. That is that yeah, is awesome. Absolutely. That is great. Okay, and you said it's going yeah. to be out in the end of 2017. Yeah, I'd say it's in the process. We're still writing it just now, but it's all coming together and will certainly be out. Uh, well, hopefully even in the spring of next year. Certainly, certainly okay. you know next year, but hopefully the beginning of it rather than the end of it. Okay. Okay. Well, yes, you know, or I'm pretty sure our audience would love to get a hold of that. I would love to get a hold of that and understand mm. um, neurolinguistic programming because we all need to be going somewhere. You know, the Bible says yeah. that people without a vision perish. So everybody, you know, listening to this program right now should have um, a goal that they want to achieve that, um, you know, programming their brain in, in the correct way can help them achieve it. Okay, awesome. Yeah, now, um, Maureen, we are going to take a quick station break, and we'll be right back. To every man, there comes that special moment when he's figuratively tapped upon the shoulder and asked to do that special thing. Suited to him and fitted to his character, that special thing. What a tragedy, a tragedy, if that moment finds him unqualified and unprepared to do the work which would be his finest hour. That special thing. Are you living your dreams? Welcome back to Mindset Transformations with Coach Myrna. Today we have a very special guest coming all the way from Scotland to talk to us about living a life with no limits. And Maureen's story is an exceptional story of how she herself, you know, opened her life with no limits by bringing herself back with the control of her mind from multiple cirrhosis, being no, having no control over her body, having to be looked after to now running into the arms of her lover and chasing her dog and doing all those wonderful things. And she's been training others in how to do that. So, Maureen, I am so excited to have you on our show today. I'm learning a lot, and I'm sure that the audience is going to be extremely interested in, um, you know, learning from your experience. 
Now, um, let's dig a little deeper. Um, what made you go for, what what was the trigger that uh, made you decide that, you know what, enough is enough, I am not going to accept this sentence that I'm going to stay in a wheelchair all my life and have no control of my body. Tell us about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, to be honest, the moment is so vivid, Marna. I remember <laughs> the exact moment, the exact morning, November 2002. And oh, my goodness. I had a real, a real moment of when I realized I was sick of being sick. And that's the honest answer. You know, I was sick of being sick. Mm-hmm. And there was a song okay. that came on the radio, and there was this song um, by the Lighthouse, a group called the Lighthouse Family. And the words of it were, though it's darker than December, what's ahead is a different color. You know, and that had meant so much to me over sort of the five years previously living up to that. That song had always given me hope. And I'd mm-hmm. played it sort of back to back many days, you know, trying to sort of cheer myself up. And that okay. particular morning, it just, it came on the radio that particular morning when I'd been up and people, you know, my carer had bathed and dressed me, dumped me in my chair and left me for the day. And wow. that song came on the radio and I heard the words, though it's darker than December, what's ahead is a different colour. And I actually heard myself screaming, no, it's not. It's all the same. Hmm. And in that moment, I recognised that if I didn't... I had another 30 or 40 years of the same, what felt like an existence to me. Mm -hmm. And I screamed, enough is enough. I can't do this anymore. And it was in that moment that I dug deep for courage and visualized what I really wanted, you know, the miracle that I wanted in my life. And that was to be happy and healthy and running up hills with my dogs and running into a lover's arms and be passionately (laughs) loved and squealing with grandchildren and, you know, smiling and feeling the wind in my hair and hearing the birds sing. And, you know, that was in that moment. And it was that real enough is enough moment when I realized I had 30, 40 years of the same if I didn't try and create my own miracle, if I didn't try and do something different. Because everybody else had told me just to accept. Yeah. And, you know, so, and it really came down to, you know, that particular morning, just that song came on the radio, and I suddenly thought, no, for me it's not, you know, it's, for me it's not a different color ahead. It's actually the same. <laughs> same color. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Boy, is this the, the slightest, uh, you know, somebody might have thought of, you know, something, for, yeah, something bigger than that. Um, a words and a song, but yeah, it takes sometimes just a little wind or a breeze or a feather to yeah. to be that yeah. moment. So that is awesome. So um, after you know, give us a little bit more. So you sat there and you said, "No, I am sick of being sick." So what did you do first? I I literally shut my eyes and I dug deep for courage and I visualized. I saw in my mind. Okay myself happy and healthy and running okay. about and fit and healthy. Okay. okay. And do you know but I didn't just visualize it and see it. I allowed myself to float into that picture, to step into that picture as if I was really there now, really there at that moment. So that I felt as if my legs were running at the hills. So that I could wow. feel the wind in my hair. So that I could actually feel the happiness and the passion and the love. So I stepped into and floated into that body and allowed myself to feel how amazing it felt. And that was what fired the hunger and the desire for it. That really made me, you know, it fired that hunger and desire. But because I don't, it's almost like going and trying it on for size. You know, as I saw in my mind what I really wanted, and I didn't go yeah. for compromise. You know, I went for the biggie. I dreamed big and I dreamed bigger. I went for the full, the full recovery, the full health, the love, the everything. Yeah. Um, well, you know, it's, um, it's actually very powerful. I'm actually working on uh, visualizing myself right now. Um, I try to do it, you know, every night before I go to bed because it's so important. Mm. Um, listen, you know, ladies and gentlemen that are, look- that are listening, you know, Maureen um, uh, is teaching us how t- how she visualized and and brought herself back to health. Um, 
but it doesn't it's you know or how you can visualize um, where you want to be but you know i want to be a, um a a motivational speaker i know you're also a motivational speaker but you know mm. i visualize myself you know being in front of an audience and what it feels like yeah. and you, you actually have to put yourself in that spot and you actually have to feel it you have to live it and there's so yeah. I you know <clears throat> there's so many books right now that are talking about visualizing they're talking about even money that if you yeah. want a certain amount of money visualize you having the money mm. visualize it going into your bank yeah. visual and not only yeah. visualize visualize and feel yeah. that you're spending it that you're you know but it's 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 very hard to do. I mean, I have a knack for it, but I'm trying yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest, Marna, mm-hmm. what the, uh, no, most personal development they, they will talk about about visualization, and they will you know say about seeing it and stepping in and feeling it. But mm-hmm. what they don't actually perhaps go on to say is that actually you still have to take the action and play your part. You know, if I had solely visualized myself healthy. And that was the only thing I did. Nothing would have changed for me. Because okay. every time I opened my eyes from visualizing, I was still disabled and I was still where I was okay. before. That's a good point. So you, okay. Yeah. So, you know, it, the visualization to me is that it sets the blueprint for success because your brain doesn't know the difference if you're there right. in reality or there in your mind only. Right. But it also yes. inspires your hunger and motivation. It builds your belief you can do it. The more you visualize it, the more you want it. The more your brain thinks you're already there. But you, you do then have to take the steps to make it happen. You know, I and and what and I step did you take after you opened your eyes and saw that you were still sitting in a chair? Yeah, what was the I step mean, that you took? It was, it was a long process for me because I had to look at, you know, who was, a, who was me. You know, I didn't, I had to look at all aspects of my life. I mm-hmm. think, you know, it's not just about physical. It's not just about having to build my muscles and find ways of doing things again and managing pain. It, you know, it wasn't just about the physical side. It was about looking at me and thinking, who am I? Am I fully yeah. expressing myself? You know, I was, you know, I'm looking at my life and thinking, my goodness, I've, I mean, I'm feeling trapped. I feel I've got an existence. I've lost more confidence. I don't know who I am. I have to look at everything. You know, mind, mm-hmm. body, spirit, soul, and allow myself to take the physical action to build my muscles up. And the first thing I did was try to put my own socks on, funnily enough. <laughs> put on socks? And, yeah, okay. socks. Tried to put okay. socks on my feet, and I failed miserably the first time. <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. That's a small action, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but then, you know, but then I was, you know, I would set myself goals, you know, to try and walk three or four steps by myself. Yeah. Once I'd done it, I would make the goal a bit bigger, so we would work yes. up to eight steps. That's how it steps. works. I would try to, you know, learn, you'd be able to do my own teeth and watch my own hair. I would look at my own learning about me and who am I and what are the things I enjoy. And I started doing more of the things that fed and nourished me. And, you know, things like, you know, what really feeds me, what nourishes me, what drains me. And I started doing more of the things I enjoyed doing. And, you know, and in the early stages, it was very simple because I was obviously very, you know, I wasn't very able. So mm-hmm. in the early stages, it was maybe listening to loud music and listening to music I want, sitting and having a good laugh at an old film on television. Okay. You know, beginning to think about my own um, knowledge and experience and skills and really turning, looking for solutions rather than the problem. Rather than Good. the problem of I can't do this and that, you know, X, Y, Z, I started looking at what can I do. And, okay. you know, so it's about looking for solutions and what you have in your life and what you can do and really turn that complete mindset around. And, you know, having okay. to, you have to want, want it so badly. You have to know what you want. And you have to give yourself permission to want it. But you have to believe you can have it, and you have to build mental resilience so that, you know, all the knockbacks you get, you bounce back, and you keep going. And, um, you know, you have to go after it with every fiber of your being as if your life depended on it. Okay. Well, that's, that, is, that is awesome, right? You know, and um, when, you're, when you're ill, um, uh, you can have that mindset change where, you know, you're sick of it, 
you know, you're motivated. Mm-hmm. But, you know, some people will maybe not be motivated to do, you know, to get a better job, as, as you know, like if their life depended on it, or, you know, to go to school, and, you know, whatever it is that they want, they might not have that um, that motivation or that it, their life yeah. depends but on that, it. That is the power, the power of visualization on actually allowing yourself, give yourself permission to go after what you really want. Because if you visualize it, see it, allow yourself to float in and build those feelings, that will motivate you. And okay. you have to commit to take that action, okay. to say, you know, that if, and it's because it's a choice. You can choose to stay where you are or you can choose sure. to try and do something about it. Yeah, there's always a choice. choice. So, yeah, you, you mentioned the big word, mindset. Because, okay. You know, you, the big word you just mentioned, you, um, you know, this show is all about mindset transformations, and you're right. In order to make mm. any kind of change, you normally need to change your mindset first. So, um, mm. so we talked about the fact that you said that you were sick of being um, sick, right? You've had enough. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say was the mindset that, um, that changed for you? I had to open my mind to the possibility of something different. Okay. And, you know, Good. that's one of the biggest things, you know, that you have to do. You have to open your mind to possibility. Okay. And then start believing in the mm-hmm. possibility of, what, of something different for you, Some, you know, of a different life for you, of, this, you know, whatever it is you want in your life. You know, and you have to let go or challenge and question all your limiting beliefs, you know, not just of your own, but, you know, what other people have maybe put on you. And because we grow up, you know, very conditioned to believe certain things. And you have to challenge and question them and recognize that a lot of those limiting beliefs, you know, they're not really true. They're just in your mind. You hold them as true. You know, you hear it all the time, people saying, I'm no good at X, Y, or Z. I can't mm-hmm. do this because. Whereas actually, you have to throw them all off and think, you know, if I don't try, how am I ever going to find out? You know, so you really have to really challenge and question the limiting beliefs that you hold about yourself. Or the others hold by you. And it's like you have to almost break the shackles and allow yourself that yes. freedom to dream and to dream big and to go after it with every fiber of your being. You know, because if you want something and want it badly enough and understand your why, understand the difference it will make to your life, that will fire your motivation and it will fire your passion to go after it. Yes. Understanding your why, okay, little well, audience, we're getting, um, you know, Maureen has given us some really good nuggets here, um, life-changing nuggets. Um, yes, and I love the fact that, yes, you have to open your mind to the possibility. A closed mind doesn't mm-hmm. get us anywhere. When you have a closed mind that this is all you can do with your life, you know, hey, you know, I've got four kids and there's there's no way I can go to school or, you know, whatever it is, you know, that's a, there's no way that I can be a truck driver. It's a man's job or whatever your limiting beliefs are. You know, women are breaking barriers now. Women are doing things that, you know, they were told before only a man can do. You know, and I guess the men are changing too because they're doing things that they were told mm. that it's a woman's job or whatever. You know, if whatever you want, um, uh, that you can just you, you can just open your mind um, to the possibilities, you know. You know, we don't want to talk about Caitlyn Jenner, but, you know, that's, that's somebody that would open her mind. Hey, you know what? You know, I was born in this body. Not that I'm, you know, saying that that's right, but I'm just saying that you have an open mind. You know, she was saying, he was saying, you know, I'm born in this body, but I'm opening my mind that I can be somebody else. You know, I don't have to stick mm-hmm. here. It's probably a bad analogy, yeah. but... But, you know, that is awesome. You Challenge know, your limiting beliefs and open your mind yeah. to the possibility. Yeah. And um, yeah. everybody that's been successful have come from a place that you wouldn't even think that there is any hope. We can look at mm. so many rags to riches story, stories, and they're, 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 they're 90% of them come from a place that you wouldn't even think that there is any possibility, but they mm-hmm. knew and opened their mind to the possibility. So that is, that is big. Um, 
Thank you, Maureen, for that. Um, when we You're always welcome. talk about belief, um, what did your belief system have to do with your remarkable recovery? You know, I my belief system, I mean, I had to completely question all the limiting beliefs I held. As in, you know, I was disabled for life. I wasn't going to get better. You know, I had lots of other ones as well. You know, fear of failure, fear of what people would think or say, lack of confidence. Yeah, yeah. But I had to mm-hmm. question them all. And far more empowering beliefs that would serve me much better and bring me the results I wanted. You know, so you have to believe and, you know, really reprogram your brain to see something different. And to okay. think, you know, just because that limiting belief is held by someone else, it doesn't mean I have to hold it. So, yeah. you know, I, my, I started to believe that I could achieve my dream, that it was a possibility, that I okay. could be healthy again, I could find true love, I could be passionate, I could, you know, I had to open my mind to those. And I had to really move into that real belief place, but also into that real sense of knowing that as long as I played my part, and took all the steps, but it would be mine. And Good, and so you probably I, got some encouragement along the way too, because that's another thing. So um, you went from being totally disabled, and you, you said, yeah, you, you, you had goals of little steps or putting on your sock or whatever. Mm-hmm. So how long did it take you from being totally disabled to running? How many years Yeah, that? about 10 years. About 10 oh, wow. Years. Wow. Ah, you know, here, I'm, ladies I'm and gentlemen, person. 10 years. Yeah. She didn't stop after the first yeah. year and say, you know, this is not going to work. Because anything has to do with persistence. Persistence is the yeah. key, right? Yeah. yeah. So 10 years. You know, and some that of, is yeah, awesome. Some of it huh? are not, you know, some of it was baby steps. Some of it, you know, was such slow progress. And then I would maybe take a few knockbacks. Some of the things I did were like massive steps. You know, I left a 28-year-old marriage at one point. You know, because I realized that for me to be truly happy and to me really have the life I wanted, I needed to do that. You know, and I oh, left wow. it without knowing where I was going to go, what I was going to live on. That's it, called bravery, know. too. So that's total yeah. mindset transformation. You know, yep. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, some of the steps I took, you know, required real big courageous steps. You know, wow. Some of the other steps, you know, to an outsider may have seemed quite small because it was like trying to put my socks on, trying to wash my hair. But, you know, all yeah. those steps, they all add up. Yes, but of it course. did take me about 10 years. It took me about wow. 10 years to actually achieve it. And, you know, the wonderful thing, I am now happier and healthier than I have Ever of course, and you've got a story yeah. to tell. My goodness, every time you tell that story, you are like putting another notch somewhere in your brain that says, hey, you know what, if I can do this, I can do anything. I'm invincible. There's no limits Absolutely. to what I can do. So that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the wonderful thing is, you know, I believe that each and every one of my clients can do it as well. You know, I do believe in limitations for me or for anyone so therefore, you know, each and every client that I work with, you know, I, I see them as, as being able to achieve whatever it is they want to do, yeah. you know, and I believe in them. So it's yeah. like, you know, that real yeah. belief in, yeah, yeah, you can do this. And you know it's something, too, you, you will be a done. great motivation force for them because anytime mm. they feel like quitting, anytime they feel like it can't be done, all they have to do is look at you, you know. So yeah. that, you're a powerful motivation force. Um, yeah, I mean yes. that's what the that's what the Bible says. If God can do it for me, for you, for um, you, He can do it for me. And true, yeah. if you can, you know, change your mind in order to do something that difficult, ten years, baby steps, you know, your clients can do anything. So yeah. that is absolutely amazing. Now, um, you know, let's touch a bit on um, mind and body connection because I know that in order to visualize, in order to Feel yourself. Step into, you know, what it is you're visualizing. You have to have the mind and body connection. So tell our audience about that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, to me, your mind and body are intrinsically linked. And, you know, what goes in one is going to affect the other one. And, you know, I 
really believe, you know, our bodies have this amazing ability to heal themselves. You know, you can go for major surgery, you know, be cut open, you know, a big common scar, and, you know, four days later, your staples, your stitches are taken out, and your, your body's healed. You know, the cuts join together. Yes. You know, I see that, you know, the body has this amazing healing power, but you okay. have to mm-hmm. give it its best chance. And I think, you know, and if you are fighting stress or negativity or unhappiness in your mind, you know, or any sort of form of negativity or stress, then your body's having to deal with that as well. So it doesn't get its best chance to heal itself. Yes. But, you know, I think you have to take that approach of looking at yourself as a whole person. What's going on in your mind? What's going on for you physically? What's going on for you at a spiritual level? What's going on at an internal level? And actually, you know, really take that real person approach to get yourself in that place where, you know, they all work to be allow you to be optimum health, to be in that, you know, optimum happiness state, to have that deep inner peace and contentment. And, you know, so I think, you know, it very much is, I think, you know, you, you, our bodies often tell us that something's not right, you know, and sometimes that thing that's not right is there's things in our personal life, you know, in our mind that's going on, that we're stressed, that we've got, you know, things going on, and it affects us physically. So I think, you know, we need to look at what's going on in our minds and in our bodies up together and actually really recognize that, for us, you know, when we're faced especially with health issues, ill health issues, if we can get our minds in our best place, then our body is going to have its best chance to do its natural work and heal. And if, you know, if we start feeding it properly and really doing you know, the physical therapies and things, then you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're sort of working with it. So yeah, I think they're highly interlinked. And you know, it, we need to look at ourselves as a complete whole person and allow ourselves to evolve in the pers- into the person we were born to be. Fully expressing who we are, and you know, doing everything we can to do more of the things we enjoy in our lives, and be happy, and live a life of gratitude, and yeah, it's you know, life can be amazing, but you know, it's about <laughs> yeah. really so. Now that is that is excellent. And while you were talking, I actually understood why you left your marriage because. Yeah, if you're trying to heal, you don't need any negativity in order to give that energy. Yeah. You need positive energy. Yeah. And if you're in a bad marriage or any yeah. place where you're not happy, then you're you're not going to heal your body. So, yeah, that yeah. is that that's big, um, listeners. That yeah. every thought that you have in your mind produces some kind of energy in your body, and we all know that. When you think bad, you feel bad. When you think good, you feel good. So what Maureen is talking about is the fact that, yeah, your body has the incredible ability to heal itself. We all know when you get a cut, you get surgery or anything like that. And, um, uh, you know, it's called homostatus. So your body naturally goes into that unless we feed it bad things. You know, you eat bad things, you think bad things. And then what happens, it impedes your healing, it impedes, you know, and then we bring on all kinds of diseases. So um, that is pretty good, you know, your mind and your body connection. And if you want to heal in any way, um, you've got to, you've got to be positive. You've got to be thinking good thoughts and you've got to energize your body to to the fullest because, you know, we're all... You know, we're all a bundle of energy, and energy is how, um, you know, we move on this earth. So, awesome. Now, we're going to take another quick um, station break, and then we'll be right back with our final segment of our show. Be right back. Are you living a life of purpose, a life of fulfillment, a life of self-belief? There comes a special. want to change their lives, but they never initiate those changes. You know why? Because they lend their ears to negative talk. The people around us who say, nah, you can't do that. You're one of us. You never be. You're not educated. You wasn't born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You're one of us. But I'm going to give you an example of a gentleman that I knew and worked with because I'm from the aviation industry. Welcome back 
to Mindset Transformation with Coach Myrna. And today we're speaking to Maureen. Um, she is a NLP practitioner and in a um, transformational life coach. And she's been telling us of how in her last segment – how um, uh, she got tired of being sick and she was open to the possibility of healing and how she changed her limiting beliefs and um, healed herself. So as we get into our last segment, um, what we wanted to ask Maureen is um, what advice that she would give to you, our listeners, and how... um, uh, someone that's going through health challenges or relationship challenges, how you can use the mind and your bodies and strategies to uh, um, achieve success. Yeah, Myrna, I think, you know, one of the biggest things is self-awareness. You know, self-awareness is the key to all change. And, you know, if you're not happy with your life, if you have major challenges, you know, whether it's in health or relationships or finances or, you know, you, you feel your life is more of an existence than, you know, a treadmill rather than feeling alive and an amazing life, you know, first of all, it, it, it's about that real self-awareness of that place where you are and recognizing that you deserve so much better, that, you know, you put value on you and your life and allow yourself, give yourself permission to want what you want. Okay. You know, it's okay to really want what you actually really want in life. And, yeah. you know, we so often... You deserve it. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, as we have an inner voice sometimes that yells at us that there's more for us to do and be in life. You know, we feel that we can't do things because, you know, what would others say? What would others think? We mm-hmm. put other people down, And we also put ourselves last. I think, you know, my biggest advice would be put value on yourself and your life. Because if you are happy, then it's a win-win situation for all your loved ones and family around you. And, you know, you have to believe in the possibility. See, you deserve, you know, you deserve to be happy. You deserve the success you want. You deserve to have exactly what you want in life. You deserve it. And it's about that real opening your mind to the possibility that you can have it and it's okay to have it and really allowing yourself to be you uh, in all your uniqueness and really express you and create a life that is in alignment to you. It's almost like, you know, moving into a life that is like the comfiest pair of shoes on your feet. You know, it just feels so good. You know, you couldn't get a more perfect fit. You know, so it's about, you know, miracles happen every day in life. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes a miracle is just being able to achieve something that somebody else has said you can't do. Well, my advice to all listeners would be believe that miracles happen. Open your mind to possibility. Really dream big and allow yourself to want what you want in life. And then, you know, really visualize it and get hungry for it. Feel it and taste it and touch it. And then take the action. Be prepared to do whatever it takes, however long it takes to make it come true. You know, go after it with every fiber of your being. Because the limitations you put on yourself, they're in your mind. You know, you're not going to know if you can achieve your biggest dreams if you don't try and go after them. You know, to tell you, you know, so many people set up a compromise. They settle for a life that in some shape or form feels second best to them because they don't believe they can achieve something better or what they want. And I would just like to say you can. You can achieve what you want. You just have to believe it. Open your mind to possibility. Believe it can happen and take the action. You know, take consistent action. And check in with yourself on a regular basis. You know, and step into a better version of yourself tomorrow than you are today. Evolve into the person you were born to be. Wow. That is powerful, Maureen. Thank you so much. 
my gosh, I'm fired up from that. <laughs> that, that was that was excellent. So yes, um, listeners, um, you heard it from um, Marine Sharphouse that you can do it. You can live a life with no limits. And as she was talking, something came into my spirit. You know, my last um, guest that I had on the show, she was telling us how her um, her grandmother got married at 80 years old to a millionaire. So, I mean, you just have to believe it. You know? And um, you, you can't say, you know, I'm 40, I'm 50, you know, nobody wants me, you, I'm sick, I'm always going to be sick, I'm poor, I'm always going to be poor. And no, um, uh, if there's anything you take from the show is that you have to open your mind to the possibility because anything is possible. We're all coming from a spiritual um, base, and the Bible tells us that if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to the tree or the mountain, move, and it will. So, yeah, so all you need to do is believe, and all you need to be do is open up yourself to the possibilities. And, um, Maureen, um, if you can tell our audience how to um, get in touch with you, I know you have some promotional items that you give away for free. Um, so if you can tell our audience um, how they can get in touch with you, what your website is, I know you also has a face have a Facebook page and a Twitter page, so because I'm sure yeah. that they would want to um, uh, get more of you um, and um, glean a bit more from you, maybe even um, have you speak or coach them if they are in. You know, of course, you coach all around the world. So go ahead and tell us yeah, how we can get in touch with you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, as you say, I do coach people all around the world uh, right. through mm-hmm. Skype. So, so which, you know, it's an amazing uh, tool for me to allow me to do that. So Thank you'll you. find me at www.maureensharphouse.com, and that's M A U R E E N S H A R P H O U S E. So maureensharphouse.com. And again, you can email me simply at maureen at maureensharphouse.com. Um, there's quite a lot of free resources available on my website, or you can simply drop me an email and, I, and ask me for them. You know, there's a visualization audio, which is the same visualization process I use to turn my life around and I use with my clients. There's a mindfulness meditation audio, a secret to feeling alive and living a life of no limits audio and PDF. There's a, an audio of empowering winning mental strategies and several other free resources, which I'd be very happy uh, to send any of the listeners. Um, also, you'll find me on Facebook. Um, Facebook, if you look for MaureenSharkhouse.coaching, you'll find I have a very active Facebook page. And I also okay. give away a coaching session every week there. Every Sunday night, I announce a fan of the week and gift a session. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and also you'll okay. find me on Twitter and LinkedIn. So you'll find me across social media. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I see your posts on Twitter um, every day. Um, I have to follow you on Facebook on, on and on LinkedIn. So I personally have yeah, to do I'm, that. And I have, you know, I've gotten your free um, podcast that you give out on your website, and I've listened to that, and that's pretty enlightening and, and pretty powerful. So, Maureen, I am so grateful that you took the time, and I know it's, you know, it's like 9 o'clock where you are. Um, <laughs> it's 4 o'clock yeah. here on the, you know, in the, in the eastern side of the world. But thank you so much for taking the time out to impart your knowledge into our listeners um, to help them to live a life of no limits. And um, uh, I am... Um, you know, I hope that we can have you in the show again and you can, you know, um, you know, some more things as far as now, you know, now that we've had one goal, then you should set another yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Right? There's no limit. 
right. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. And, you know, I would be delighted to come back at any time. Okay. (laughs) Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. You hear that? She's accepted, audience. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much. And you have yourself a good night. Yeah. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye.